Okay, good morning, good late morning to everybody. Thanks for coming. My name is Ray Hightower, and I'm here to talk to you about building iOS apps with Ruby Motion. Uh, before we do anything, what a wonderful place to have a conference. We're in Hawaii, we're in Honolulu. Let's give a hand to the organizers for putting this together. Lunch to, uh, yesterday was great. Lunch today I know is going to be awesome as well. So thank you for that. I know you put a lot of work into what, what we're doing here. So thanks for coming. So I'm going to talk to you about building iOS apps with Ruby Motion. My name's Ray Hightower. That's me. I'll throw that slide up at the end. Uh, bottom line is I run a user group called Chicago Ruby and a software company called Wisdom Group. We build Rails and iOS apps. And uh, thanks for having me here. Here's our agenda for today. We're going to go through what, why, how, and Q&A. What is Ruby Motion? Why do we care? How do we do something productive with it? And Q&A. I, I think we'll spend more time in the, the why and the how than any other parts today, because I think that's where the, the meat of the talk is going to be, where we'll be able to answer some questions for you. So what? What is Ruby Motion? Ruby Motion lets you as a Ruby developer write iOS apps. And the apps that you're writing with Ruby Motion are, are, are compiled into LLVM bytecode. These are compiled apps. They're not interpreted. In order to run Ruby Motion, you need to have a Mac. Someone was asking me earlier if I can do Ruby Motion without a Mac. You actually need a Mac running OS X and running uh, Xcode. You buy Ruby Motion for $200 at rubymotion.com, and you need an editor. I use Vim, but you can use TextMate or Sublime or Emacs or any other editor that you prefer. <coughs> Excuse me. Why Ruby Motion? Why not just write apps in, X, in uh, Objective C on Xcode? Why, why bother with doing it in Ruby? Well, there are a couple of reasons why you might look at doing that. If you need an MVP right now, and you know Ruby, and you need to get that MVP done right now, then Ruby Motion is probably the way for you to go. Now, let me talk about MVPs for a second. MVP is a minimum viable product as defined by Steve Blank in his book, The Four Steps to the Epiphany. Now, I hear a lot of people attacking an MVP by trying to throw features after feature after feature into the MVP before you get it out of the door. The main idea behind the MVP is that you want something small with the minimum number of features that your clients are going to need to see in order to purchase it, and then you put that out in front of your clients and determine if they're going to buy it. It's not a, an opportunity to throw a bunch of features into something and get it out there. You want to have a minimum viable product, minimum and viable at the same time. That way you'll determine if they want to buy the product. If you know Ruby already and you're building an MVP on iOS, Ruby Motion's a great way to go. Another reason to learn Ruby Motion is if you want to learn Ruby better, if you want to learn more about Ruby. This is a side effect that I did not predict as I dived into dive, dove, what's the past tense of dive? Well, as I uh, dug further into Ruby Motion, I began to learn Ruby better. I understand more about mix-ins and inheritance and modules than I ever did before. Because I came to Ruby from Rails. How many people came to Ruby from Rails? And the rest of you were probably pure Rubyists beforehand. Well, for me, I, coming to Ruby from Rails means that a lot of the things happening in the background were kind of like magic. But if you attack Ruby from Ruby Motion, you'll understand why a lot of these things are happening. And, and Ruby really is a, a very beautiful and effective language. Why not Ruby Motion? Well, there's some good reasons why not. If you already know Objective C, then you probably don't need it. You probably don't want to go that route. Uh, I did meet a guy, though, who's an Objective-C developer who wants to learn Ruby so that he can build back-end APIs for his Objective-C apps, and he sees Ruby Motion as a gateway drug to Ruby, just as Rubyists may see Ruby Motion as a gateway drug to Objective-C. So the bridge is kind of a two-way street right there. Another reason you might not want to do Ruby Motion is if you're concerned about what Apple's going to do with Ruby in the future. What if Apple breaks Ruby Motion? intentionally or otherwise. We don't know what's going to happen there. Worst case scenario, though, you'll know a lot more about Ruby. You'll know a lot more about object-oriented programming, object-oriented design, and all of, the, all of the things that you need to know there. So it's really not a losing proposition. Now let's jump into how. You've uh, heard me talk enough. I'm going to uh, show you a demo of um, let's build a Ruby Motion app. Uh, Ruby Motion is handled at the, can the people in the back see that all right, or do I need to zoom in a little bit? Should I zoom in? Zoom in, zoom in, how's that? Okay, and I'll do this. Gotta use Moom, yeah, okay, motion. 
So if you do motion create hello, for example, if we're going to create a hello app, there's a bunch of files that it creates as, uh, when you do motion create hello. Almost looks like you're doing Rails new. Uh, I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to go into another directory for a hello app that I, I, that I created earlier. If you run the tree command, you'll see the files that were created. There's a rake file. Those of us who use Ruby are very familiar with rake. Rake is Ruby make. Uh, the app directory is where we have our app delegate. And the app delegate is the entry point for the uh, application. Now let's go ahead and run it. To run your Ruby motion application, you just run rake. It looks in the rake file. And here we go. Hello, oh, magic Ruby. I'm at Aloha Ruby. Well, I better fix that. What you can do is hold down your command key, mouse over the object right here, and you'll notice that right here at the command prompt, this changes when you mouse over an object. So you mouse over it uh, and uh, click it. You can grab that object by typing self. See that self.txt says, hello, magic Ruby. We don't want it to say that. How about Aloha? Because we're at Aloha Ruby. And let's put an ex two exclamation points. How about that? And then you see that the, uh, the, in the simulator in the background, there it is. So while the app is running live, you can actually go in and change the attributes of the app live right there uh, in the middle of um, running the app. So let's get back to the slides. OK. So that's how. Uh, and I just showed you this. I have the slides here. You know, you never know when you're doing something live if it's going to fail or what have you. So <laughs> we make sure that we have what I just showed you in the, in the, uh, the uh, command line uh, we have in the slides as well. So rake, it compiles. There's the directory structure. The name of the app is Hello Ruby. And here's the uh, structure using the Unix tree command. You can see the structure, our rake file is where we specify things like uh, what our icon name is going to be, what the name of the app is going to be. I can show you the inside of that. Resources is a directory where, where you drop in your images or your WAV files if you have some audio files going on there. It's also where you would drop in your interface builder files. Yes, for those of you who are coming to Ruby Motion from Objective-C, if you want to know if you can use interface builder with Ruby Motion, yes, you can. And I'll show you that later in this presentation. Main, uh, the uh, spec directory is where you put your specs which look just like our spec. Ruby Motion uses our, our spec clone called Mac Bacon, and you put your specs, you put your automated tests in your spec directory, and uh, all of them end with underscore spec, and main spec would, uh, of course, be one of those tests. And app, app delegate.rb is the entry point for the application. Let's take a closer look at that. Now, what I did with these slides is we have code at the bottom, and uh, I'm highlighting a line, uh, uh, highlighting a line of code with uh, the red rectangle, and it's appearing up here in large. Uh, if you can't see that, I'm, uh, the line that I'm focusing on is up at the top. So, app delegate is the entry point for the application. This is what what um, what iOS looks for. What it it starts running when it's going to run your application. And here's your uh, here's where you're defining the actual entry point, which is application did finish launching with options. What a long method, lane, uh, method, uh, method name. This certainly is not a Ruby looking method. It looks more like an Objective-C method, and it is, really. So you'll see that in Ruby Motion, you'll see some methods that look more like Objective-C methods. There is a gem called Bubble Wrap that is wrapping around a lot of these Objective-C methods, and it's making them look more Ruby-like. Uh, I'll show that in the... Uh, in the demonstration as well. So here we go. Did finish launching with options. Here's where we define the window. The window, essentially what we're telling it here is, let's create a window. Alloc init is, is uh, kind of like new. You're allocating as you would in C. You might use malloc in C here in Objective-C. You, you use alloc. And we're telling it to take the whole screen. Occupy bounds means take up the whole screen. Uh, we're assigning a root, uh, root view controller, which in this case we're calling home controller, making it key invisible. Key means this is the window that's going to receive user input. Visible means, well, make it visible. And here's where we're coloring the background color. We can change all of that. The home controller, let's go through some of the code there. 
It is an instance of something called UI view controller. Objective C uses the uh, a Ruby motion, and Objective C both use the model view controller paradigm, and uh, a view controller is what we in Rails would consider a, a controller. There are models, there are views, and there are view controllers. What we would contro consider a controller in Rails is a view controller uh, in uh, Ruby motion. Low view is, uh, this is where it's, it's uh, indicating exactly what it's in inheriting from. It's, uh, it's an instance of UI view, and view did load. When the view did load, this is what gets executed. We're creating a label. Now, the way labels are done in Ruby Motion, this 15 comma 100, that's an X and Y coordinate. Your origin 00, zero is in your upper left corner, and X goes from left to right along the top, Y goes from top to bottom along the edge. What about user experience? I gotta tell you a quick story about this. I'm very fortunate within Wisdom Group to work with other people who are much stronger with Ruby and much stronger with uh, Rails and much stronger with design than I am. One of them, our designer, the, the guy who, who's really our chief designer, uh, from time to time, I'll give them mock-ups of what I think something should look like for a client. We're working on a, a website or an app for a client. I'll give him this, and then he'll come back and make it very functional because he's a user experience professional. I was looking over his shoulder once, looking at some wireframes that we were putting together for a client, and I noticed that he has a directory on his machine that says, Ray Playing Designer, so it was a, which was a clear mockery of my design skills, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, so, I don't play designer. I actually uh, just, I'll put together some mock-ups and pass them on to a designer. But if you're going to do user experience, there are two things that you need. One, you need a designer who really does understand design. And that designer needs to work with, the, with uh, Apple's human interface guidelines, or the HIG. You'll hear people in the Apple world referring to the HIG. That's what this is. It's human interface guidelines, a set of uh, things that Apple has decided that we should do in order to be uh, more effective designers and to create things that we need uh, uh, the, uh, in order to create more effective apps. Here's UI Kit, which is a set of classes. I'm not going to ask you to read all of this. So I'll go in. We're only going to focus on six of these classes in UI Kit. Uh, everything inherits from NS Object. We have views, we have view controllers, we have windows labels and table views. And we're going to use these as we go through our next demonstration. How many of you are familiar with FizzBuzz? Maybe you've done this in a technical interview. FizzBuzz, you might sit down in a technical interview where the interviewer will ask you to write a block of code that counts integers from 1 to 100 or 1 to 1,000, however high up you want to go. And when you hit an, uh, an integer that's a multiple of 3, print Fizz. If you hit a multiple of 5, print Buzz. A multiple of 15, print uh, FizzBuzz. So, for our next demonstration, we are going to look at a FizzBuzz app. Right, do this. Let me close out the simulator. Right. And let me show you what it looks like. So this is a FizzBuzz app. Real simple, we have a label, we have an increment and a decrement in here. When I increment and when I go to nine, I should get Fizz, 10 should be Buzz. What should I get at 15? I should get FizzBuzz. And there's an increment, there's a decrement. Now, um, I also have a reset button. When I was debugging the reset button, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be neat if the reset button also did something cool like change the background? And so <laughs> this is another reason why you definitely want to work with a designer, because that's, uh, that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's ugly. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, increment, that's decrement, and reset just resets the counter all together. So if we take a look at this, close the simulator again. Let's go back to our command line. Uh, actually, I have that going in Vim over here. Here's the app. Uh, here's the view controller. Uh, FizzBuzz view controller is what I called it. Um, when we load the view, what we're doing here is we're telling it to pull in a file called FBIB that we created in Interface Builder. 
Well, let me show you Interface Builder. Interface Builder is a GUI for creating GUIs. It's a GUI that's part of Xcode, and if you've done anything with a drag and drop GUI, uh, GUI you can use uh, Interface Builder. And essentially what I did is I created the interface using Interface Builder, and at the same time, you assign to each of the elements in your interface a, uh, a tag number. So I assigned one, two, three, four to the label and the buttons, as you can see in the display. You take the file, the Interface Builder file, it's a .xib file, in our case it was uh, fb.xib, drop it into the resources directory, and there it is again. By the way, in resources, you'll see that we also have the icon for this app. There's fbib.xib, which is the Interface Builder file. It's actually XML. If you open it up, you can take a look at it. It's XML. The compiled Interface Builder file is .nib, and there's other images there if you want to have other images as well. It's called FBIB, and here is the line of code where we tell it in uh, the load view method that we want to use this interface builder file. And this is where we tell it what tags we want to use. The FizzBuzz demonstration also used that to demonstrate TDD. And as I mentioned before, your specs for TDD go in the spec directory. And let me show you that live, because it's all well and good to show it to you in the slides, but I'll show you to it what it, uh, show you what it actually looks like. Uh, let's go into, this is in Vim, and if you look in the lower pane, we actually have these specs. This is FizzBuzz view controller underscore spec dot RB. And the specs, if you look at this, this looks just like our spec. If you run, want to run this, you do rake spec goes through and it compiles and it runs the specs. You can use guard with this as well. So if you want to go uh, back and forth with red, green, refactor, you can do that if you use guard. What guard does, some, how many people are using guard or spork or something like that? Guard is cool because what it does is it watches your files and any time a file changes, it goes in and it runs your test for you again. So I'll tell it to go ahead and run guard here. Guard is watching. Move that out of the way. And I'm going to go in and just um, create a failing test here. Just so guards watching. Let's go back. So it's going through. It's running the test. And just like you would with our spec, you would do your red, green refactor. So now that test is red, and we can go in and fix it. Because in fact, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that 8 is not equal to 38. <laughs> so here we go, so here goes guard, and it's going through and it's running the tests again. One challenge with this, something that I've had to get used to with Ruby Motion, when you're doing things like running tests, it's compiling everything and then running the test. There's got to be a faster way to run tests, and I, I'm something I have to dig into. Coming from the Ruby world where everything's interpreted, we can run our tests almost like that. So that's something that I've got to get a little bit used to. Or maybe there's a better way to do that. And you saw this already. Home controller spec. That's where we uh, failed. There we go. Now, there are some gems. There are some very cool gems that you can use with Ruby Motion. By the way, just because you're compiling an app for iOS, uh, can you not use gems? Yes, you can use gems. The gems that we use, though, are gems that are specifically designed for iOS. One such gem is uh, something called uh, Formotion. And what Formotion does, it allows you to create forms that run on iOS. So if we go into that, I've got a Formotion demo that I can show you. And first, we'll take a look at the form. Let's take a good look at what it does first, and then I'll show you the code. And this is just a basic form. It is very, from the iOS developers that I've talked to, it's, it's, uh, it's very time consuming uh, to create a form like this. But in Ruby Motion, using the Form Motion gem, what you do, you can create this with something that looks almost like CSS. So I can show you that. This is it. In the bottom pane, this is it. We're specifying the title, 
of the different fields that are here. As I scroll down, these are the title of the fields, and this is the switch button. So if I go back to the simulator, I do this. Let's say I'm filling out this form. I'm on your wonderful iOS app that you've just put out there, and you've got a new uh, subscriber named Ray Hightower. He's very security conscious, so his password is password, because no one would ever think of that. And then he uh, logs in. And uh, note, um, the passwords, you don't store passwords in clear text normally. This is just for demonstration purposes, just to show you that this uh, can collect the data. All right, so that's Formotion. This is the Formotion gem. In order to use that, going back to Vim for a second, in order to use that, you do have to go into your rake file and tell it that you are going to require the Formotion gem. So that's it right here. All right, again, this is what I just showed you. You're requiring the Formotion gem, uh, and this is what creating the form looks like, looks almost like CSS. So it's very simple, very straightforward, uh, relatively easy to update and to change. And I just showed you that. Bubble Wrap, I mentioned it earlier. Actually, the creator of Bubble Wrap is here, Matt Imonetti. Uh, he's here at the conference, so you want to uh, talk to him, just go up to him and say, hi, uh, thanks for creating Bubble Wrap. Bubble Wrap is a gem that makes Ruby Motion code or makes iOS code look more Ruby-like. Now, here's an example of this is a, a, a chunk of code from uh, in Objective-C. This is the same thing in Ruby Motion. Uh, if you want to dig into more details about what's going on be behind the, the scenes here, behind this event or behind this uh, method, take a look at uh, uh, Clay Alsop's blog. In fact, he's now contributing a lot to bubble wrap, uh, to for motion. He's doing a lot of work out there in the Ruby Motion world. He's one of the people that's uh, putting a lot of effort into that. So. Is this a good reason to use Ruby Motion instead of Objective C? I'm not sure that's true. Uh, some people say, I want to use Ruby Motion instead of Objective C because with Ruby Motion, I'll do less typing. But the fact is, we're all using IDEs with code completion anyway. We're not typing anyway. So is less typing a, a, a good reason to do it? I don't think so. I think a good reason to look at Ruby Motion is if you have a background in Ruby and you want to build iOS apps. So. If you're going to use bubble wrap, you do have to go into the rake file of your app and you have to require bubble wrap. That's what's done right here. And here's an example, and this comes from NS Screencast. And actually, you know, this uh, Ben Sherman, who created an, uh, NS Screencast, and Ben, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing your last name, but Ben Sherman, when he created this, he uh, has both domain names, uh, NS Screencast, singular and plural where he does, goes through a demo of uh, bubble wrap. And let me show you an application that was uh, written using bubble wrap. It looks more like what you would want to see if you were doing, if you were uh, following the HIG, the Human Interface Guidelines. And what Ben has done is uh, he's created an app that goes out to his site and pulls up what screencasts are coming up. So we'll show you that in iOS. And this is it. And if you want to look at the code, here's his API client. And I'll have this in the slides afterwards also. But as you can see, in the rake file, you do have to go to the top pane. Here in the top pane, you do specify that you're using bubble wrap and that you're using bubble wrap HTTP so that you can take advantage of what bubble, da bubble wrap can do for you HTTP-wise. Uh, in, uh, in the bottom area, the only reason I inc included this line, my URL, is so that I could blow up the code large enough for everyone in the room to see. But you can see that that's included here where we're doing an HTTP get. And we're grabbing the data here that appears in the simulator. So that's what bubble wrap can do for you. And that's it. Ruby tools with Ruby Motion. One of my favorite tools, one of my favorite Ruby tools is actually RVM. Some people may use RBENV, other people use RVM. I use RVM, I started with it, and I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, I understand that you can use RBENV with Ruby Motion as well. I like it because it 
you know, I like to do destructive testing when I'm doing development or when I'm learning something new. And uh, when you do destructive testing, if you blow something up, it's always good to know that you can just wipe it all out and start from scratch. That's why I like uh, um, RVM. Cupertino is a gem. How many people have dealt with provisioning profiles with iOS? Have you ever dealt with that? How many people enjoy it? <laughs> I don't enjoy it at all. It's, uh, what a pain in the neck. If you gem install Cupertino, then you can handle your provisioning profiles from the command line. Uh, and in this case, I'm just taking a look at the iOS profiles that I have on my local machine. The app IDs are not actual. I did change those so that I don't have the actual app IDs there. But that gives you an idea of what Cupertino can do for you. Auto layout is a new feature of Xcode that allows you to specify your layouts for your iOS devices uh, in, in such a way that um, they behave kind of like Twitter bootstrap. You can specify relative pos uh, positions for your labels and for your buttons and your other elements of your user interface. So auto layout uh, will work with RubyMotion as well. Arc is something that uh, I believe it was Xcode 4. Arc is automatic reference counting. Bottom line, it means we no longer have to do memory management if we're writing apps in Objective-C. Well, RubyMotion uses, uh, uses something that is very similar to Arc. It doesn't use Arc, but you don't have to do explicit memory management with RubyMotion either. Finally, we're at the end of the talk, really. Does it make sense to use RubyMotion or Objective-C if you're writing iOS apps? And I, I like the way uh, I met a gentleman a few weeks ago who asked the question, if you were a VC and you were using your own money, spending your own money on a developer to write an iOS app, would you hire a developer to use RubyMotion or Objective-C? And that's a good question. My take is, if you already have Ruby skills or if your team already has Ruby skills, I would go with RubyMotion because then you can get the MVP up and running relatively quickly. And if that MB MVP flies and you're getting paid for it, then you have the money to pay for more developers, be they RubyMotion or Objective-C developers. If you have an Objective-C background, you can take a look at RubyMotion because as we talked about before, it could be a gateway drug, a gateway or a, a bridge to Ruby because if you're writing iOS apps, there's a good chance that you want to back end on the web somewhere. And that's it. Here are a bunch of resources that you might look at. Type is small for those of you who are in the room, but these slides, I've already made these slides available at rayhightower.com. So you can go and take a look at the additional resources. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how do you do segues? The question is, how, many, how do you do segues between multiple view controllers? Uh, in RubyMotion, and I think it's this way in Objective-C, your view controllers are part of an array, and so you're specifying where you are in the array. So I think that's, uh, I, I think that's how it's done in Objective-C, but that's how it's done in, uh, in RubyMotion as well. So you, you, uh, you, you, you segue between the controllers by specifying a different index in the array. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, have I ever encountered anything in RubyMotion that I wish I could do, but that I couldn't do because of RubyMotion? I haven't yet. Um, most of the apps that we're working on are not really cutting edge in terms of pushing the, the boundaries of RubyMotion. I think the, that the apps that will really push the boundaries of Objective-C or of iOS are games more so. Because games, that's where you want something really fast, and that, that's where you're going to be using all the attributes of the iOS device. But for the kinds of business type apps that we're doing, you know, I hate to say business apps are boring, but <laughs> you know, boring apps make money. You look at Forbes magazine, they say dull to normal businesses are the ones that make money. So uh, there you go. I haven't yet, but hopefully I will. Yes? No, all of, uh, the question is, are there any key features of the iOS device that are not ex accessible through RubyMotion? Uh, no, you can get to the accelerometer, you can get to the camera, all of the device, because what, what happens is you're writing Ruby code, but it is compiled for iOS. You can actually get to the device. 
It's not like some of the other tools. I'm going to mention them by name, but there's some other tools out there that allows you to write pseudo apps, I guess you could say, but you weren't actually producing the byte code that can run on the iOS device. Yes, sir. Uh, does it translate to Objective C? Yeah. Um, what it's doing, and I'm just starting to study this right now, but the Ruby Motion is actually compiling to LLVM bytecode. And I'm just wrapping my head around what LLVM, I mean, it's fantastic. You're shaking your head, which means you've probably studied LLVM uh, a little bit, right? So for, this, is, this is what I know about LLVM so far. The, the letters stand for low-level virtual machine. It was called that when it was all about virtual machines, but since then, many other tools have been added to the LLVM tool set. So they kept the name, but it's expanded beyond just a simple virtual machine. And essentially what it is, it's uh, the result of a guy's PhD thesis in the year 2000. He was uh, developing a compiler and developing a virtual machine. So LLVM includes virtual machines, a compiler, a debugger. Uh, and the big value proposition of LLVM is portability. You write LLV, you write a, um, um, a compiler in LLVM so that you can have multiple targets in the end. In the case of Ruby Motion, your two targets are x86, which is the simulator that I just showed you in this demonstration, and um, ARM, which is the, de uh, the chip that runs inside your iOS device. So a very long answer to a short question, right? Um, the short answer is no, uh, LLVM. <laughs> so yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the question is, we talked about doing this for a minimum viable product. Would we still want to use it for a full-blown solution, or would we want to uh, shift over to Objective-C? I think it could work well for a, a full solution as well, but I'm coming at this from a Ruby bias, because my team is primarily Ruby. Um, if uh, we were more Objective-C oriented, we might see things differently. Uh, and then I do need to emphasize, too, there is the risk that uh, Ruby Motion could be broken if, if Apple decides to do something different. I don't think that they will, though. When I look at how Apple makes money, they make app, uh, money from every app that gets sold in the App Store. So I don't think that they would intentionally want to put a restriction in place to, to prevent you from writing in Ruby Motion. But then I'm not in the Apple boardroom, and I'm not privy to the, the internal thinkings of their executives, so I, I don't know. But uh, the short answer is yes, I think you can do it, uh, but there's some people who may still want to write in Objective-C. So definitely MVP, and then for the final product, I think it depends on your team. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, the question is, is anyone extending this into writing Mac OS apps? It's interesting that you ask about this. The person who created Ruby Motion is Laurent Cincinnati, who also is the driving force behind Mac Ruby. So, you know, some would argue that it's already there in the form of, uh, of Mac Ruby. Now, I don't know. Uh, your question prompts me to, to ask myself. I don't know if there are things that Laurent has learned as a result of Ruby Motion that he's turned around and say, hey, you know, I think I want to include that in Mac Ruby, you know, so that the bridge runs both ways. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But, um, in fact, if, if, you, uh, if you want to learn more about Ruby Motion, uh, a good place to start is the Mac Ruby book that was put out by O'Reilly, written by a guy who's running around this conference, uh, Matt Amenetti. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, storyboards, you can use Interface Builder. Can you use storyboards? I don't know. I have not tried storyboards. Uh, you can help me out. Are, are you an iOS developer, Objective-C? Is that your focus? You're learning? Right. Okay. From what I understand, storyboards use Interface Builder, and I can use, or we can use Interface Builder with Ruby Motion. So if the transitive property applies to software development, you know, A is greater than B, B is greater than C, I would think so, but I'm not, I don't know from personal experience that you can. But you can, you can definitely use Interface Builder because I've done it. You in the white shirt, you had a question.
Yeah, the, the, the question is, can you take advantage of packages that have been written for, uh, for CocoaPods? CocoaPods is Ruby gems for Objective-C, or can you take advantage of other, other software that has been written in Objective-C within RubyMotion? Uh, yes, you can. And you would use the uh, resources directory for that. I haven't dug into that yet. I've seen some screencasts where they've done that, and I've seen some blog articles where they have done that. So you can leverage, like if, you've, uh, if you have an Objective-C library, or even better, if you have a C library, haven't done this yet, but I saw this in a screen, where did I see this? I saw this in a screencast or a blog, and I get them all mixed up, because I've just been drinking all this in, right? But OpenGL, for example, is written in C, and you can use OpenGL with RubyMotion. And I think the resources directory plays a role in that. Any more questions? So let's go play with Ruby Motion. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.